Today on World Bank for Food, I'm going to show you how to make these delicious chocolate covered cake pops. Only food for me. Food, food, food. Welcome back to Will Bake for Food. Have you ever been walking through a coffee shop and all of a sudden you see these little cake pops on a stick and you're like, how do they get that cake in that perfectly round shape? Well, today on Will Bake for Food, I'm going to show you how to make a brown sugar and vanilla cake pop covered in a semi-sweet chocolate glaze. You can find a full list of instructions and a full set of ingredients on my Will Bake for Food blog. Now, let's get started. The first thing that we have to do in our cake pops is get a little bit of chocolate melting because we need those to go on our sticks. So I've cut up four ounces of chocolate just into big chunks and put it in my handy dandy candy melter here. And um, the next thing that we need is our cake because they are cake pops after all. <laughs> so I have made a full recipe of Martha Stewart's yellow cake mix which makes two nine inch rounds. I have made two different batches. This one nine inch round will do really well with my one stick of brown sugar buttercream. So the first thing we have to do to the cake is to crumble it up. I know it's like beautiful layer of cake and we crumble it up but through the magic of TV here's what it looks like. Okay. So I've crumbled up my cake and I made a little bit of a well in the center. If you want to cut off the edges just to get some of the caramelization gone, you're totally welcome to do that. I've never found it to be a problem. Um, I usually have my cake sit a couple of days in the refrigerator so it's all completely soft as far as that goes. Now I have my recipe of with one stick of buttercream here. It obviously makes a little bit more than that but plop that right in the middle. And I leave this butter, brown sugar buttercream very um, doughy consistency because that's kind of how you need it to be for your cake pops. So just start to coat the buttercream and knead it in just a little bit at a time. And I don't like to put all of the buttercream in at once. Uh, twofold because, huh, twofold, huh, I'm folding, um, because um, if you need less buttercream, you can't take it back. But if you need more buttercream to put into your crumbles, you can totally put more in. It's starting to come together really well, almost into a single ball, but there's still a few pieces that are kind of crumbled. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this buttercream in there should be good to go. So it all comes together and is one big ball like that. So that there's nothing left in the bowl. That's what it looks like. Nice. I've lined the pan with parchment paper or these little silicone mat that I have. Um, parchment paper would be fine. Just something so that the butter doesn't stick to your, your pan because I've had that happen before. So you definitely need the parchment paper. And then I have about a tablespoon worth here of a spoon. And we're just going to put these, like look at those layers, it's kind of cool. We're going to put these into balls like that and they don't have to be exact. You know, if you really want to make them exact, you can totally measure it out, but that'll add a lot of time to this process. And then I have a popsicle stick here and my chocolate is there. So I've made my ball here. I'm just going to dip my popsicle stick in my chocolate and then stick it in here about halfway through. And what that does is helps the chocolate to hold on to the ball otherwise it'll just kind of fall out. So this batch at this size makes about 35 pops. So I'm going to get those done and then I'll show you what's next. Okay so this made 33. Some of them are a little bit bigger than others etc. Um, if you want to, another thing I found was when you were making the ball, if you want to go ahead and stick the stick into there and then dip it in the chocolate and then stick it in, then you uh, have a little bit the same success but the chocolate will go a little bit farther down into the hole. So now what we have to do is these are too soft to stick into our hot chocolate. It will just melt everything. So we need to chill them for at least 30 minutes. So I'm going to chill them in the, just in the refrigerator for 30 minutes and I'll show you how I make my holder while they're chilling. 
Okay, so once we dip our cake pops into uh, the chocolate, they need to sit up so that they have a nice clean edge on the top. Otherwise, you get a little bit of chocolate spillage and it'll have like horns on the outside. So what I've done is I took some Oasis foam is what this is called. It's for floral design. And I just did three of these and kind of taped them together. And then I wrapped it like a present and poke some holes in, just starter holes or whatever, so that my cake pop stick can go straight down in there and the paper will protect the Oasis foam from getting any chocolate drip or whatever on top of it so it won't melt it, etc. So I've got two of these ready and um, now I need to cut a little bit more chocolate and one of the things that we have to do to get the chocolate thin enough to go around the ball is to put a little bit of Crisco or I know it as vegetable shortening in here and the exact measurement mm, I don't know but about that much it's about a half a teaspoon or so and just stick that right into your melter with the rest of your chocolate and when it melts it will be a thin consistency so you can dip your balls in there and twist them and it'll come out really clean. I'll show you that process after we get through chilling. I just wanted to give you that idea right now. So once you have chilled your cake pops, you want to take them out and make sure that your chocolate is nice and runny, kinda. And what you're going to do is tilt your tub and stick your cake pop. Make sure that the chocolate gets all the way up to the piece of chocolate that we already had in there that was on the stick. Hold this way down into the tub and turn like that and then invert. It will smooth out, I promise, and then stick these into those pre punched holes into your container. Now, the way to store these that I found the best is once they have chilled in this for about 30 minutes or so, you can take them out of here and put them like in a plastic bag and just lay them flat. They don't last very long in our house. <laughs> so anyway, this is this is simple as cake, <laughs> I should say. These are my brown sugar buttercream and vanilla cake pops covered in a, a semi-sweet chocolate coating. Thank you so much for watching We'll Bake for Food. Only food.